If you focus on making one big, bold, specific problem to a smaller segment, you will see a dramatic increase in the total amount of traffic that you generate to your website, to your social media channels, on your email list, and eventually leveraging that into... Welcome back to another episode of Female Empowered. I'm your host, Krista Gurka, and this is a podcast for females in the healthcare, wellness, fitness industry, specifically boutique fitness studio owners and cash-based physical therapists or professionals looking to gain some insights on the ins and outs of the business. So most of the questions, well, not most, a lot of the questions I get besides marketing, which we just did in a recent episode, is how do I grow my business? So are you interested in growing your business, maybe even doubling your business, but you simply cannot imagine how that can happen because there is absolutely no way you can see yourself taking anything else on your plate. I really hear, I feel you, I hear you, I empathize with you. You know, there was definitely a long period of time where that's how I felt in my business. Um, you know, there was times where I felt like that circus performer that had was like spinning plates in the air and, and started putting more and more plates and then had to run back and forth because one plate started going a little slow and just feeling like the stress of letting a plate drop or, you know, do you feel like you're in an intense game with Jenga and you know that if this next person takes that one piece out, everything's going to come crumbling down. I feel you. And this is common. And I think a lot of us feel this way, at, at least at some point in growing our business. But what if I told you that you could grow your business without taking anything else on? Would you believe me? Well, if you don't believe me, I encourage you to listen to this episode because that is exactly what I'm going to share with you today. I am going to share with you how you can grow your business without taking anything else on. There really is a prevailing myth out there that if you want to double your business, if you want to grow your business, you have to double the amount of work that you do. You have to double the amount of ad dollars you put out there. You have to double your team. And to be honest, that's not really true. You know, whether or not you've been told that or not, a lot of people really act if that's the case. And in most cases, doubling the amount of money we spend or doubling our team or opening more locations doesn't necessarily double, triple, or quadruple our business. We really only sometimes just purely incremental growth. It doesn't automatically, that also comes with you doubling your work and you have to, you know, increase operations and spend more money. Okay. Here, what I'm talking about is how can you double your business? How can you grow your business really without taking anything additional on your plate and really without spending more money? All right. So how are we going to do that? Most of you, most of us, I'm going to put us, me in this too. Most of us struggle with really how to understand how to bridge the gap, but from knowing what we should do to growing our business to which strategies should we implement and when should we implement them? What stage of the business growth cycle are we in? And what do we need to focus on right now in the here and now in the present to make this happen? All right. The fastest way to double your new leads, your clients, double the amount of people coming into your business, grow the amount of people coming through your doors is to get crystal clear about whom it is you want to attract. Then make sure you're speaking to that market specifically. Okay. I talk about this a lot and I know that people are really, really fearful and really hesitant and feel a lot of resistance to this. But 
I'm going to say that it's like, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. And this is not a one size fits all business. It, what ends up happening is it becomes a one size fits none. People are looking for someone that can solve their specific problem. They don't necessarily want a generalist. So how can you get crystal clear on who it is that you want to attract and then make sure that you're speaking to them directly? You have to really stop talking to everyone out there. All right. Only a small portion of a really broad message is going to resonate with any one prospect right? Just a little piece of that. Let's, besides the fact that people have very, very little attention spans these days, you really have like one second, two seconds to grab someone's attention. So how are you going to do that? Less words, be very specific, hone in on your messaging. If you focus on making one big, bold, specific problem to a smaller segment, you will see a dramatic increase in the total amount of traffic that you generate to your website, to your social media channels, on your email list, and eventually leveraging that into paying customers. So the number one thing you have to do is throw fuel on the fire Traffic fuels the business. Traffic, leads, new clients, attraction strategies, whatever you want to call it, you have to get more people to know about you and you have to focus on one big, bold promise to a smaller segment of the market. Now, I know a lot of people think, well, I don't want to leave anyone out. You're not necessarily leaving people out. What you're doing is you're just focusing your efforts on a small percentage of people, then they will eventually tell people about you, okay? So just be very specific about your marketing. So once you've honed in on who your target target audience is, who is your ideal buyer, then you have to work on converting them into appointments. So when we talk about this, and I did this on a previous episode, the five pillars of marketing, The first pillar is attraction. People have to know about you, especially if you're a small business owner. All right. So now you've really, and this could take months. It could take year. Okay. So say you're only going to focus on attraction for one month, two months, three months, and you're really just going to go all in on that. Then you want to now, now you have this big pool of people that's listening to you, that's engaging with you, that knows who you are that's seeking out more information about you. Now you want to convert all these like new people into doing business with you, which means scheduling an appointment with you. So how do you get all of these new leads, this new traffic, this newfound audience that's now knowing about you? How do you get them to make an appointment? All right. One of the best things is to leverage automated campaigns automations. All of this comes with systematizing and processing your business. Okay. So you can use a combination of emails. You can use video. You can create social media blasts. You can create blogs. You can have a podcast. And what you're doing is you're, and and again, automating, 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 automating. So you're offering them the option to simply click and schedule their next appointment with you on your calendar or in your studio or in your classes or for one of your programs. And you want to make this stupid, simple, seriously, stupid, simple, something a second grader could understand how to do nothing confusing. Think like, what is the exact next step you want them to take? Schedule appointment. So that's one call to action. So if you have them on a landing page on your website, there are no other buttons on there. There should be no navigation at the top. There should be no footer at the bottom. There should be no other button on there that navigates them away from that page because the one action you want them to take is to schedule. So there should be one button that says schedule your appointment now. Or if the call to action is download this freebie. Whatever it is, it should be very clear, very easy, and providing value so that they will exchange it for their email or to schedule an appointment with you. 
All right, setting up a system that automates this process so that every single lead that you generate, every single person that engages in your social media, every single person that calls or every single person that down gives you their email because they downloaded a freebie, every single one of those leads receives follow-up contact multiple times. We've said this a lot on the show. It takes anywhere between seven and 21 touch points, depending on where you read for them to really book with you. So you want to give them multiple times and it's giving them the time they need to warm up to you and then schedule that appointment. Automate this process. How are they going to do it? There's lots of um, um, CRMs out there, customer um, retention management systems. There are, um, you could do this in, in a lot of email um, providers with ConvertKit, um, MailChimp. I mean, MailChimp doesn't do automations as well, although they're working on it. Active campaign, but you know, definitely automating this. So as soon as someone ends somehow ends winds up in your funnel, winds up giving you their email, they are put on this sequence where they're going to get an, a certain amount of emails. I love including video in the emails, a welcome video anything that's gonna make them get to know, like, and trust you more. And then what is the exact next step? Schedule an appointment with me, okay? So now we've fueled the fire with getting more traffic. We've now taken that traffic and gotten them to schedule appointments. Then the next step is how do we confirm and we manage and we bridge the gap between appointment made and appointment ar arrival. So, right, so scheduled to arrived. Because there is a big drop off from, well, there's always going to be a drop off from leads to schedule to arrival to conversion. Okay. So we want to minimize that as much as possible. So, how can you ensure that people that schedule appointments will show up? Well, there's a couple ways. Number one, creating some sort of they have to pay before as a way to get them to show up. Holding on to a credit card. I always, always, always recommend this. I don't let people book without putting their credit card down. Um, and I explain why. Then the other thing is you really want to eliminate any momentum killer. So what do I mean by that? The shortest time between calling, scheduling the appointment and arrival, like, so in other words, if someone calls today and you can get them in, in the next 24 hours, that's great. Ideal. 48 hours, ideal. Once you start booking out a week out, two weeks out, there's a lot of time between that, right? And you have momentum killers. So it's what happens when time lapses from when the appointment is scheduled to when it's actually occurring. So ways to eliminate these momentum killers is with what we would call a pre-appointment engagement campaign. This is also can be done when people do like webinars. If you have someone coming on a webinar because you're going to sell a program, you really have an engagement campaign in which you give them, maybe you give, send them an email that has a video of like where to park or where to find your studio. Maybe it's something like how to download our app. Here's some information about your therapist or your instructor, things like that. And so, you know, I would encourage to have at least two to three emails, especially if the length of time between when the appointment is scheduled to when it's actually taking place is long. So if it's like a week, two weeks, three weeks, you definitely want to have two to three emails in there. If it's 24 hours, I wouldn't say have two to three emails. Okay. But having some sort of re-engagement campaign is really important so that it doesn't kill the momentum and they don't decide or forget about you or decide that they, eh, I don't really need it. I'm not going to go. Okay. Also calling to remind them, having reminder text, all of that stuff really helps eliminate the no-show rate. Okay. So finally, whether you're working on a re-engagement campaign, so like re-engagement, re-engaging, excuse me, customers to come back, or you are trying to increase what we call the AOV, AOV is an average order value. These two ways are huge ways to double your business really without taking anything else on. So re-engagement, how can you reach out to former clients, former patients, um, and see about getting them to come back in? So we have a re-engagement strategy 
that's actually called um, so whether you are talking about um, bringing back clients, so we actually have a, a re-engagement campaign where we have it automatically set that after 30 days, after someone has not been into our business, they, get, they receive an automated email that says, we're thinking about you, How is, how's it going? You know, is there any questions you can, we can ask for you? Hit reply and let us know how we can help. That's one that goes out. We have another one that goes out three months after somebody hasn't been in. We have another one that goes out if somebody hasn't been in in 30 days and they still have credit or classes or stuff on their account. So we have all of this automated. Now, the other thing that you can do is in, try to increase what, again, what we call the average order value. So how can you do that? Let me give you an exact example, okay? So let's just say for, let's just say you get 20 new customers in your business each month, whether that's for classes, new patients, new clients, new for your wellness service, whatever that is. So 20 new visits. And on average, let's say that each of those people spend hundred dollars just for even numbers. I know some people spend hundred, some people spend 200, but let's just say for hundred dollars. Now, if you get each of those 20 new clients to spend $120, $20 more. So let's think grip socks. If you're a Pilates studio, yoga mat, if you are a yoga studio, towel service, rental, um, water or membership perks, anything like that, an additional $20 smoothies, that would be an additional $400 each month, which is almost $5,000 a year. Now let's say you get 40 new clients a month, $10,000 a year. Let's say you can get them to spend $50 more, all right? Again, $10,000 a month for 20 new clients. So anyways, this is a great way trying to increase the average order value. It's the same, it's the same, you know, the same way if you go to a restaurant and you order a, um, you know, oh, I'll have a vodka soda and they say Grey Goose and you're like, yeah, I'll have Grey Goose. The server is upselling you, okay? Grey Goose costs more than Popov, okay? If you worked in a bar, you know that Popov is like the well vodka. Um, so, or, you know, Grey Goose costs more than Smirnoff usually. So they're trying to get you to buy something premium. So we oftentimes, there's, there's other ways that you could do what we call a post-sale OTO. That's a one-time offer or an order bump. You see this a lot when you're purchasing online. So for example, you'll go to, you know, check out and then you'll get this little pop-up that says, oh, almost finished for $25 more. You can get, you want to add on the service. Do you want to add on a foot massage to your, you know, massage or a scalp massage or a scalp treatment? Or do you want to add a, if you're a fitness center, do you want to add a smoothie on that order now? And it'll be ready when you're, when you arrive. Do you want to add a yoga mat on there? If you're selling a course, would you like to add a, an additional freebie on there? Um, so those are called OTOs, one-time offers. If you're a Pilates studio, you, you can say, you know, um, add on your grip socks now and we'll have them ready for you at the studio for physical therapy practices. You know, if you're letting people schedule online, you could say for $20 more, get, um, I don't know, Theragun treatment or something to that effect. But these are ways that you can seriously, you can, you can bring in an additional anywhere from 10 to 50 to $100,000 in order bumps if you talk to the clients about it, right? You can even do this at, in the studio or in the gym when people come and check out. So this is something that you can do in person as well, okay? Um, so basically what we've talked about today is traffic is the fuel. More traffic in the door fuels the whole engine of all the different levers that you can pull in order to grow your business. Okay. So traffic fuels that engine. And how do you get more traffic? You really hone in on your messaging. You double down on your messaging. And again, this doesn't happen overnight. This doesn't happen with one iteration. This happens with 
time and time and listening and changing and amending and changing and speaking to your clients and listening some more, it takes time. Okay. It takes time. It does not happen overnight. It could take a year. It could take two years. We're always updating our messaging and I've been in business for over 10 years. Okay. So traffic fuels the fire. And then all the other, the other levers that you can pull are improving your conversion rate, improving the amount of people that make appointments, the amount of people that show up for appointments, and then the amount of people that convert into long-term clients from that by retention, re-engagement, and basically repeat transactions. So how much recurring revenue can you get in your business? How many people re-engage and buy more services? And then increasing your, what we call like the contribution margin basically, which is like average order value. How can you increase the average order value? All right. Even by a 10%, a little goes a long way and it doesn't really take that much work. It sometimes is merely a question. All right. So all of these ways that we chatted about today are how you can grow or even double your business without taking any more clients on. You don't have to do any of this. A lot of this can also be automated. It's really why I'm a big believer that you have to have systems and processes in your business in order for it to be sustainable and in order for you to grow sustainably. Because growing by just taking on more work is not sustainable. And it's not always more profitable either. So I'm just going to say it again. Traffic fuels this engine. And then the other levers that you're that you can pull to grow are conversion rates, repeat transactions with recurring revenue, and then increasing the average order value. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would really, really, again, I'm really trying to get this podcast out to as many people as possible. I would love if you scroll down and left me a review. It would really, it literally 30 seconds, 30 seconds of your time. This is me asking you for help. So leave a review and then, you know, DM me over on Instagram at Krista Gurka. I always love hearing from people. If you had questions about this podcast, DM me over there. I share, I usually go live on my Instagram page on Fridays with a precursor of the following Friday's episode. Um, So just, I'd love to share and interact and engage with you guys. So if you can do that, I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, my friends, bye for now.